How's it going YouTube? It's your boy Optima back with a brand new video and I know it's been quite some time since I uploaded and I apologize again for another kind of long hiatus, just lots of things in real life going on, but we should be able to get back into the swing of things this time. I feel pretty confident in that, <laughs> but obviously don't quote me because you just never know what real life sometimes and especially with me being a parent, but nevertheless, thank you guys so much for tuning in into today's video. Your support, especially through the haphazardness on the, on the channel that's been going on really means a lot and especially if you're one of those goaded people who chooses to like the video because you enjoyed it or just because you want to support me and be a cool person on, and also if you uh, subscribe to the channel, you are awesome and I appreciate you and you should be subscribed anyways because like I said, Lots of content on the way and I will be doing my absolute best to bring you guys that so please 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 support the channel really really helps me so that I can continue to do more of this it's a lot easier to prioritize this over like other smaller things when supports coming in so any support really means a lot but nevertheless thanks for watching today's video today we're going to be going over a tier list for the current legends of runeterra scene so obviously i want to hear from you guys in the comment section on what you agree and disagree with so please make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below one of my favorite things is to understand your guys' perspective and hear from you guys so we can just kind of bounce our different perspectives off each other it's really awesome i love when we're able to do that so please leave a comment below whether you agree or disagree with me i would love to hear your guys' thoughts and sorry if i sound like i'm talking with like a little bit of a list or just kind of weirdly um, I have a really bad blister in my mouth that's like not playing games with me at all and I'm trying everything to get it to calm down but yeah my apologies there but I wanted to get you guys content while I had the free time so we're, we're out here that's what we do um but yeah anyways I'm Optima hi I play Legends of Runeterra competitively a lot I made it into Masters last season and was able to climb pretty high I was able to get into the top 500 um just literally seconds past um the cutoff for um the seasonal and uh and yeah i feel like i'm a pretty good player i've learned a lot during my time with legends of runeterra i've been playing for quite some time now so i feel like my opinions are pretty decent as far as this game goes and uh and i just i absorb so much i watch tons of tournaments i watch tons of other top players play the game so i feel like uh, i have some pretty decent things to say and i actually did so much research for this tier list you guys would not believe it so i hope you guys really um really enjoy i have a whole visual that's all on my website for it as well i'm not sure there may be a link in the description of the video you can you can check for it i'm not sure at the time of this video going up if the website will be ready to go live so uh there may be a link there may not just be on the lookout for it um and uh and yeah i should also do like an official video for the website as well but i've been working very hard on this the meta just changes so much every time you blink so it's really hard to kind of keep up with it 24 7 but i feel pretty confident that this is a pretty solid list so once again i hope you guys enjoy so here's going to be the runeterra life website a lot more to come with this later um but yeah we're out here and uh yeah we're gonna go over tiers we're we're gonna do like an s tier below type thing um i just like the way s tier sounds as a, like an above a tier thing so that's what we're rocking out with and uh yeah here's how the website looks i hope you guys don't mind <laughs> um but yeah let's uh let's scroll down to our first deck on the list and that's going to be none other than um demacia action on severe so obviously let's backtrack a little bit um, we're in the beyond the band of wood meta we've been able to play with these new cards that we got from this expansion for a little bit now so i feel like opinions on the meta are a lot more um, well refined as uh, especially my own on what exactly is good and what isn't good and new stuff still coming out so definitely like be be ready to check back here once the website goes live for more updates i want to keep this very regularly updated because i feel like few websites have a very up-to-date tier list so i want to be one that's doing it so uh, once the site goes live, definitely check here regularly for updates on what's what's shaking. Because uh, there's no better way to prepare for the meta than knowing not only what's good, but what these decks are running and how they're like navigating through the ever-changing meta. So I just think it's a really helpful thing for people who want to not only um, stay up to date on the meta, but uh, be good, like p be able to do well in the meta. You got to know what these decks are running. Um, and I would say that was one of the biggest changes I made once I got better as a player was being more mindful of what's in my opponent's deck not just what's in my own deck um but yes obviously that means that we got the hot 
fix uh, patch notes um, that uh, recently came out just a little bit before the world's qualifiers, which was last weekend. And those came with some nerfs to a lot of the severe package, whether it was the Demacia Action severe package or the um, combo Ionia severe deck, um, and then even a Blade, uh, a, uh, a Zerorelia nerf. So that kind of shook things up a lot. And um, once again, more reason as to why a tier list would be a good way to evaluate where we stand with things. So once again, first and foremost is Demacia Action severe. This is still going to be an S tier deck in my opinion. It had a great showcase during the world qualifiers um, where plenty of people were able to do well who brought this deck. Um, and it was kind of in that like goaded deck lineup that a lot of people um, found, which I think was like Demacia, Action Severe, Zoe Nami, um, and then and I think like Caitlyn Draven. Um, I think that was like the the god tier lineup that people were running and uh, yeah it had a really uh, good showing the deck still is so strong when it comes to all the interaction that Demacia offers the Sivir Sarima package and uh, even with the few nerfs we uh, the nerf to um, uh, Merciless Hunter now 4-2 nerf to uh, Ruin Runner now a 6-3 um, and the nerf to Shapestone. Even with all those, um, this deck still finds itself just being able to outvalue other decks because of how strong its play patterns are with the interaction that's aided by already really strong cards. Um, just things like Cataclysm on Sivir um, with her quick attack, just get rid of the most impactful. You like five attack, quick attack, uh, yeah. Um, that's gonna get rid of most things. So, um, and, and all those all those uh, interaction spells actually have an insane synergy with Akshan as well. Um, Akshan's um, Warlord's Palace is able to then get um, finalized, like you get through the countdown really quickly because you're playing all these interaction spells, and uh, uh, and they're they are pretty much buffs, and so then it works with the Warlord's Palace. Um, another huge card in this is the uh, Bright Still Protector. I think it's one of the best two drops in the game, if not arguably the best two drop, and. Um, it's uh, it giving barrier to already really hard to remove cards like Sivir, just strong, really solid cards like Sivir, Ruin Runner and stuff. Um, not only synergizes with the Warlord's Palace, but then also is just uh, so strong defensively that makes it so hard to uh, punch through this deck at any given time. Nevertheless, though, it is on the downturn. There's no understating that the deck definitely took a hit um, with so many things being nerfed in this package. But I still think it's sitting pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nicely in the S tier. Um, and it shall be interesting if it can have another strong showing during the actual full-on Worlds um, Now competition that we have coming up uh, next weekend. Shall be quite interesting, but nevertheless, I think this is a strong deck. Um, the one thing people are doing to navigate the nerf is they added in Screeching Dragon over Ruin Runner, and that shall be interesting to see if that's going to be something that people do as well in the tournament scene, because it definitely seems to be working well on ladder. Next is going to be none other than what I would say is probably the best deck in the meta right now. That's going to be none other than Nami Zoe Elusives. And pretty much the only thing you could knock this deck on is just its over-reliance in a sense on Nami and if not just Nami then also um, Fleet Admiral Shelly um, there's a decent bit of reliance on those to kind of get the deck going and Fleet Admiral Shelly being like a pretty expensive unit means that there's more reliance on Nami to get Nami down on turn three and really get the the train get those uh, get those wheels running on the train get that choo-choo going um, because yeah this is a combo deck this deck absolutely wants to have good spells to uh, to use to just throw out there once Nami's on the field and then just start buffing its elusive units and one of the main ones that really gives this deck that strong strong presence is Sparklefly because Sparklefly having life still allows you to even in some unfavorable scenarios just kind of stall out the game until you're able to get your Nami or get your Fleet Admiral Shelly in that advantageous position and buff too many elusives up to where you overpower your opponent. Um, Sparklefly is a huge part of the game plan and it's mainly what separates this Nami deck from any of the other versions um, because yeah, there's just no elusive unit like Sparklefly when it comes to turn into a big unit that just prolongs the heck out of the game. This is something we were very accustomed to back during the filial stays with Vel Tempo where um, Sparklefly was becoming quite the huge unit during uh, the then and uh, yeah, it feels like Nami's bringing that back. Um, in her own way without needing a uh, landmark to do so um, and Nami's probably arguably I'm not really sure who can even come close to it but arguably the 
easiest to level strong champion like she she levels just so easily but she's actually so impactful as a level champion which is really interesting and may be why a lot of people are talking nerfs to nami because yeah i think not really having to do anything and then you have a level nami who is so strong is a little bit concerning um but we'll see how that is navigated by the dev team down the line there is just no denying how strong this deck is and um and yeah good pilots of the deck can navigate not getting nami in the early game but you will find yourself beating a lot of people uh who are on this deck if they do not draw nami because not everyone is um well acquainted enough with the deck to be able to navigate not having the main engine in the deck but nami zoe elusives tearing up the meta such a strong deck and uh yeah has brought elusives back which uh not a lot of people are too fond of uh let me know where you guys lie in the uh in uh, as far as your thoughts in this elusive heavy meta moving on though we're gonna get into an old staple of last meta and that's gonna be none other than lulu z elusives rally and just like uh Demacia action severe this was one of the best decks of last season where it was just tearing up the ladder definitely popularized by none other than swim trim one of the best deck builders we have in the rune terror scene um this deck tore the ladder up and i would actually say for good reason i know a lot of people think this deck isn't the funnest to play against or it's too strong or this this and that but the meta was feeling a little bit stale at the time of this deck actually getting popularized so i actually think he did a great thing by forcing people to not only use a different deck but then tried to counter a different deck which just brought in a ton of new i uh new things that were able to get um played and uh tested um because yeah the meta was feeling pretty stale with the state that um the severe sivir package was kind of in prior to the inclusion of the lulu z elusives rally deck but no, nonetheless this is still a very strong deck in this current season of legends of runeterra just has extremely strong play patterns twin disciplines is still such a strong tool for the deck offensively and defensively if you're pushing a very strong attack but you need that extra three damage twin disciplines is there offensively and defensively once your opponent's trying to remove lulu or zed you got a defensive twin disciplines which few things can actually like kind of do anything against like what if you were dealing three damage with your spell and now it's a six uh a a six health unit uh yeah you're probably not killing that thing that turn and that's the and that's all the deck needs just that extra turn to get another attack off so a extremely strong deck the buff to young witch that we saw prior to last season just did so much for this deck as it allows it to also not only push a lot of damage but also just make these favorable trades too by giving its units quick attack and um and yeah it's just a strong deck demacia works so well um with other like regions and especially ionia i just think demacia ionia they just really really um work well in this particular um deck and uh and yeah i just i think it's s tier and a lot of people aren't playing it because there's so much other new different ideas to mess around with but as people start to deviate back to some old ideas i expect to see a lot more lulu z elusives rally and even a lot more severe auction demacia to staples the last meta that should definitely see more um play as we um as we dive further into the beyond the bandlewood meta and then we're going to get into a brand spanking new deck that came out in the beyond the bandlewood meta using a brand new champion and a very powerful landmark which is honestly kind of odd to say because we haven't had like strong strong landmarks it feels like since like veld tempo and since um uh, what's the Demacia one that gives everything challenger? I can't think of it. You guys will help me out or I'll put it on the screen somewhere But yeah, it seems like since then we haven't had a super strong landmark But hey, I guess we're back to it and that's gonna be another deck that got popularized by swim trim apparently it started in the um, there was a charity tournament where a bunch of uh, popular personalities in the legends of runeterra community all got together and used used mono decks of all the different runeterra regions and played in a tournament against each other um like mogwai silver fuse swim trim um lots of big names and um and apparently fresh lobster brought like a deck that was similar to the poppy fizz bandle tree deck and apparently swim trim revisited it refined it and made what we know today as the poppy fist bandle tree deck and this is going to be an insanely strong deck in this meta a lot of people are putting this deck in a tier i noticed on their tier list i do not agree i do not agree that this is a an a tier deck this is absolutely an s tier deck and the reason being is because 
there's I, I'm not sure I even recall a deck that was as versatile as this because this deck can beat you as an aggro deck it can beat you through its landmark and it can also beat you through um like and it also like is is controlling the board state because it's using ravenous flock so it's can it can aggro you down control a little bit like get rid of your most impactful units or ravenous flock amongst a few other um control spells like group shock so it's just an extremely versatile deck that very rarely runs out of units so it's just like always wide which is so hard for a lot of decks to um combat and um and then yeah it also doesn't really care what you're doing because what it does is just stronger especially if you're not playing landmark removal which since the inclusion of landmarks has just been bad like there hasn't been good landmark removal at any point and that hasn't really got any better um up until this point like we got like bad landmark removal like things like crumble um so so yeah strong deck that uses an actual good landmark that isn't really easy to remove and this is a landmark unlike like star spring that uh tomkin shiraka uses tomkin shiraka has to play that early in the game so it can actually get not only the healing from it but get it to win the game but bandal tree is just wait till it's like finished or wait till you're close to finished and then and then throw it down and um and that's uh and then it also generates like a card too so if you throw it down early you're getting the card generation for those those uh region units that you don't currently have so it is so much better than star spring in every shape way and form and it makes it to where even landmark removal can be a futile strategy against it because of the fact that you could just hold on to it until once your opponent finally goes below their their uh their uh removal uh mana like as soon as they drop below three then it's like all right i'm gonna throw it down now because you can't scorch earth it and uh yeah very hard for very hard to play around and really strong and yeah it's just one of those decks that doesn't really care what you're doing which makes it a little interesting when it comes to the tournament scene um i'm very curious if we may have to reevaluate whether riot lock is what's best for the tournament slash like an actual competitive meta because of the fact that people can bring triple bandle tree lineups and i think that's very that sounds very gross so um that's something we may have to uh reconsider down the line is do we have to uh take a different route with what we consider our current um competitive way of playing this game um but for now super strong deck that is just never runs out of value and in the right hands is extremely dangerous so um, i think absolutely an s tier deck because you have when you're building a new deck if you're not respecting bandle tree you will be losing to bandle tree a lot and when it just comes to the amount of value this deck continually generates how many decks can't exist in the current meta because they have no answer to it and how many decks just like struggle more because they have good answers to a lot of things but not this um it just has to be so respected and it changes the meta in such a way that i think absolutely Bandle Tree is an S tier deck, um, but I'm willing to hear other arguments as to why it's not. I just I haven't understood why some people don't think it's S tier. This is a deck that is actually quite quickly um, losing stock in my opinion. This one's falling on tier list, and that's going to be uh, Cinna Vagar Darkness. This was going to be an archetype that I had a lot of hope for going into the Beyond the Bandlewood um, expansion. I love like Cinna's one of my favorite uh, League of Legends characters. Um, she's just so cool, so well designed. Um, I just love everything about her, um, especially just like aesthetically. She's so cool to me aesthetically. And um, actually getting her into the game as a champion who had this super cool play uh, like effect of making Soul Sweet Soul fast speed. Like I think most of us were kind of like, okay, that's going to be so broken or so strong. Um, but we didn't realize how strong so much, uh, some of these other uh, things in the meta were. Um, and actually how much darkness actually runs its list pretty tight um getting darkness going and getting it really going is a process and it's even harder in a meta that we're currently in where it's hard like there's so many strong champions who get going so quick and uh yeah it makes it hard for darkness to kind of stabilize in a good way and um and yeah, it's uh, if you don't have Cinna down, slow speed spell that's only dealing two mana. If you haven't got the darknesses boosted at all, it's a darkness is a bad card until it really starts to get going. So that's really what kind of holds it back in numerous ways. And then the the there's so many bad versions of this deck that were just thrown together early on in the meta that it also really tanked the win rate of darkness. And I don't think it's as bad as that. And that's why it still finds itself um, in a tier. 
but the deck is losing losing stock because it just struggles to keep up with a lot of the faster paced strategies in the meta these these rallying elusive decks or just rallying demacia decks are hard for it to deal with and uh, i just think it's when it comes to the a tier decks it, it requires a lot more brain power than a ton of other decks when it comes to what's the correct play on any given turn and how do you stay in the game and then more even more importantly i think it's the actual deck list itself you have to be running the correct cards in this deck list. Run Aloof Travelers. Stop not running Aloof Travelers. You need that in this deck. Stop running Solari Sentinel. That's a bad card. Run Demacian Sentinel instead. Um, it's just the list is tight. Very, very tight. And people keep throwing in like bad bad things that really make the deck so much worse. Um, but yeah, it does still have a few things that you can consider. Try to run a one of like Miss Call and things like that to get around uh, Mini Morph and stuff like that. But in a meta where things aren't going too late, and if they are, you're dealing with a, Cy a Scion right in your face, it's just a little hard for Darkness to really find its place. But I think hopefully as players start to optimize this list better and learn to play it more, maybe we can see a little bit of a turnaround from Darkness. But as of right now, I think this is one of the decks with the biggest question marks on is this actually even a good deck? Um, but but I'm, I'm going to say yes after even playing a little bit more of it today. I actually haven't been able to play too much myself, but I'm going to say it's still a good deck. From there, we're going to get to Scion Draven Discard. And uh, since we already were talking about him, and uh, yeah, Scion, obviously, when the uh, Beyond the Band of Wood expansion first dropped, Scion shot so many people easily and quickly up into Master's Rank because of how strong of a champ he is and how, um, how much worse every other, like, first time built deck was then scion he seemed like the poster child of value because it just felt like discard discard um and that every time i'm discarding i'm like doing something that synergizes in, a, in another way with the rest of the deck and then now i got a leveled scion and he's going to die and then i'm going to revive him and then you're going to lose um and uh, that's still kind of how things are going. Like, the, not a lot of the Scion decks have even improvised their list too, too much. Um, when it comes to the tournament scene, there's been a lot more teching in the Scion uh, decks there. But Scion actually had a little bit of a pretty poor performance in the world's qualifiers um i think that that's mainly due to not a lot of innovation and also people very much so planning for zion scion directly so if people are like going so hard on targeting a champion or deck that of course it's probably going to have a bad showing but um um yeah I, I haven't, there's not a lot of teching of this deck going on on ladder. People are playing very standard lists and are still finding pretty solid success. That's just because Scion's such a strong card and there's just so much value within the discard, more mid-range archetype that we currently have to our disposal now. So uh, it shall be interesting to see if this deck has to start innovating a little bit more as things go on. Um, but with only Mini Morph as it's a real like sworn enemy, I think Zion Draven decks are here to stay as pretty solid top tier decks you can be running in the current meta. From there, we're going to get into an aggro staple that's just been here since the beginning of time, it feels like. That's going to be none other than Misfortune Gangplank Pirate Aggro. This is a deck that most of us are extremely familiar with, who have been playing Legends of Runeterra for quite a while, as the deck has just continued to be a pretty solid option, uh, like every meta um it did have a little bit of a downturn when make it rain was nerfed for that time frame even though it doesn't really rely on that it just felt like it does really need make it rain to be a pretty decent card for for like mis misfortune's sake and uh and stuff like that and now that make it rains back to being a pretty good card it seems like pirate aggro still ba is ba right back in the meta to being a good uh, meta deck um Obviously, people like to notoriously say that aggro doesn't really require that much brain power. However you feel about that, nevertheless, I think uh, Pirate Aggro is definitely one of the forefront aggro decks that you can be running. Uh, just very strong with all the different um, uh, strong like early units you can drop down, how wide you can go with this deck and easily overwhelm your opponent. Um, I currently in this meta like the list that are running a one of uh, Captain Farron just because it gives you a little bit more versatility in the late game to not if if aggroing your opponent out doesn't work the way you want it to because like a lifestyle unit got in the way or something. I think Captain Farron gives you a little bit of a decent get out of jail card. Whereas uh, otherwise, if the early game doesn't go well, you just lose with this deck. So I kind of like the idea of that. But nevertheless, Pirate Aggro will find itself in A tier as a very solid um, deck that plenty of people reached master's rank uh, with 
early on in the Beyond the Battlewood meta, and it's still showing some strong, um, some uh, strong uh, stuff um, right now in the meta. From there, we're going to get to Sejuani Gangplank Plunder, and this was a deck that saw itself. It pretty much reached its ceiling probably um, last season as uh this deck was all over the ladder just uh, making things so tough for everything and uh yeah it was just in a really solid place that we didn't have things like mini morph to just kind of turn sejuani into like get rid of sejuani so easily um or even king plank like we just didn't have access to that um so Things have tailed off a little bit because of the inclusion of uh, Bandle City. Not only is Aloof Travelers an issue for this deck, but as previously stated, Mini Morph is a huge issue for this deck because this is one of the most champion-focused decks that you'll see. It needs its champions to finish out the game. Um, it, its entire game plan is pretty much heavily focused on trying to get its champions down and, and get them down leveled. Um, so when you're able to disrupt those champions, you pretty much are disrupting the entire deck because it doesn't really function otherwise. Um, but nevertheless, leveled Sejuani is still one of the best units in the game if it's not facing something that can remove it. And uh, yeah, it can still lock up boards and cause a headache for plenty of decks. Nab is still really good as far as stealing your opponent's cards and use them to your own disposal. Obviously a little RNG trying to get things that actually can do something for your own board. But for the most part, with so many just like good cards being ran in every deck you can find some good stuff to nab from your opponent's deck and uh yeah still has very strong play patterns but definitely has a lot more thinking involved as to how to navigate around the new cards in the meta and possibly having to always just throw down your sejuani gangplank as soon as you can so it doesn't get hit by an aloof travelers because that card is all over the meta so definitely a little bit on the downturn this season because of uh, all the new cards that make it harder for it to exist but nevertheless still a very strong option in beyond the bandlewood from there we're going to get to a deck that's actually dealing with the opposite and that's going to be pike rex i lurk that's actually is seeing a rise in its strength in the beyond the bandlewood meta because of the fact that lurk um just loves these little decks like uh bandle tree that just keep playing small units that can't really trade with anything um lurk loves that it will just keep powering through those with strong attacks until it just destroys your entire nexus or until you lurk with pike on top of your deck so that you can get the pike spell and wipe your opponent's entire board um as long as you have done enough damage dealt enough damage with your pike um yeah, this deck is seeing a huge increase in success, I would say, or a substantial increase in success because of it just being like a good counter deck, which is odd to say for a deck that just really doesn't have that, like it just really doesn't require much, like it just has such a straightforward play, that's what I was thinking, straightforward kind of game plan. It's just like attack, 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 hope you lurk each turn, and hope that you can get that, uh, you can get that uh, Pike Lurk, because that's really what's the game changer for this deck. Uh, sometimes a very early or like two Lurks with a Rek'Sai into actually playing Rek'Sai is another way of winning. Um, or just like having like lurking each turn and getting Rek'Sai down can win you games. But more often than not, you really want that Pike spell. And uh, um, for a deck that just works so straightforward, it's interesting to me that it's finding itself in a position where it's actually like countering things in the meta. But sometimes that's the way it goes um some of these even straightforward decks find themselves in good spots and that's the case with lurk and uh yeah players are noticing it as well lurk uh definitely showed up at worlds a decent bit and had a pretty all right showing so lurk is on the uprise there's not a lot of nuance to the list i just like running one right of negation in the list because it kind of keeps you a little bit more safe um facing against certain things but nevertheless a very simple deck that's doing some strong things in the current and then we're going to get to the draven pnz tribeam decks and this is probably one of the most controversial controversial kind of archetypes in the meta right now um because caitlin came through strong trying to get or trying to take ezreal's place in these tri beam focused decks and for good reason um when you run caitlin it kind of opens up the other cards you can run especially the units you can run like aloof travelers is a much better card with the caitlin version of this deck than it is with ezreal so um yeah we just find ourselves in a position where uh players have finally figured out how to run caitlin she was looking so bad prior to uh kind of getting figured out but um yeah caitlin's feeling pretty freaking strong obviously she's a three drop so synergizes with tri beams and you 
just really don't you don't care if she gets removed whereas Ezreal to actually get the real value out of Ezreal you have to run all these other cards to like ping your opponent's cards and target them and you just don't have to force in cards that aren't that good in the meta right now um, when you're running Caitlyn compared to Ezreal. And then the other issue Ezreal's facing right now is there's so many elusives in the meta right now that he's not just getting easy Nexus hits off to get those Mystic shots anymore. So he's also lost a ton of value there as well. I still think Ezreal's a really solid champ, and that's why we still see a picture of him um, for the graphic. But um, but the uh, but Caitlyn decks are definitely looking a little bit better right now, um, at least for the time being. And yeah, there's plenty of justification as to why you'd want to run Caitlyn over Ezreal in these uh, Draven P and Z Tribeam decks. For now, I'm going to keep this deck at A tier, but if Caitlyn can continue on her upward trend, we may see this deck in S tier soon. Um, as a Caitlyn deck, it would at that point, it'd have to be separate to Ezreal, because the Ezreal deck definitely feels like an A tier deck. From there, we're going to get into a, a old friend of many, not me, I hate him, and it is going to be Lee Sin alongside Zoe um, OTK. And uh, yes, the notorious Lee Sin. He's been he's been a, a decent champion, or or like a, a he's had a decent deck in so many metas. Just because he the way he works is just so so strong, where you're very easily able to just get him leveled up, boosted up, and then do that strong OTK attack into your opponent's nexus. That feels like it lacks a little bit of interaction, which is my issue with it, but. That's a thing for another day. Nevertheless, this is definitely a worse deck in this meta once again because this is another deck that's hyper focused on its champ. Um, not both champs, just one of them. Um, but yeah, things like mini morph, things like uh, stress defense. There's so many options um, with Bandle City to make uh, Lee Sin not be able to OTK your Nexus. Um, so this deck is on the downturn, um, especially on ladder. I think it's still really strong in tournaments, and that's where it still finds itself in A tier because I actually forgot to mention that, but this tier, this uh, tier list that I'm providing you guys is trying to factor in the, uh, competi the competitive tournament scene and ladder both. Um, less of tournament than ladder, but definitely a little bit of both. And... Um, and yeah, for those two, for those reasons, Leeson finds himself still in A tier, but with a possibility of dropping for sure, because those Leeson players are so afraid of, of aloof travelers right now. So definitely a deck and a champion that's just uh, not really seeing a ton of play right now. But the people who are using it and applying it correctly, they're doing pretty fine though um, overall. And there's not a lot of nuance to the deck. It's a kind of a tight ran deck where you can't really add too much into it. Um, unfortunately, kind of just Eye of the Dragon. That's kind of the only follower that you need since Eye of the Dragon's almost practically a champion. Um, and yeah, once again, shout out to the Metaforgers team. They helped me put this together. If you're unaware what Metaforgers is, I'll leave a link in the description um, so that you guys could check it out because pretty much anyone's welcome to join. We're just trying to get together, have consistent meta discussions in like a large group and really try to figure some things out um, with what's working and what's not in the meta. It's just a really fun thing. So if you want to check it out, link in the description. Um, but nevertheless, let's keep things rolling. From there, we're going to get into Shin Jarvan Barriers. And uh, Shin Jarvan Barriers, this is a deck that I played a ton of in the last meta, and it felt really solid in that meta. Um, and I can see it still being pretty strong in this meta. We still got Spirit's Refuge to kind of work our way back into a game that we maybe didn't have an early enough kind of game plan to do too much in, but Spirit's Refuge does a great job of getting you back into the game. You can still run Tasty Fae Folk. The version I like does not run it, but that is still a card you can also run as well. Um, and with access to Spirit's Refuge on top of access to like Concerted Strike, you can, yeah, you can life steal and then life steal again, um, which is just some really strong stuff that can swing the game into your favor really quickly. Um, Jarvan pretty much since his buff has felt like a really strong champion and Shin is just an amazing support champion with the right champion to support. And uh, since Jarvan got buffed, that's been his job because of the um, huge nerf that hit Fiora that pretty much took her out of the game. Um, but yeah, um, two champs that are pretty strong. It's just the deck is a little slow to start get going, so you definitely have to know what you're doing when it comes to working your way back into the game. A lot of players don't like to play on the back foot, though, trying to work back into a game, so I think that's a huge reason why we don't see a lot of this deck right now. And I think it struggles a little with the Bandle Tree deck because it doesn't really, it can't really fit in um, like Homecoming to remove the Bandle Tree. And that also isn't really doing anything because you kind of need to like get rid of the landmark, not just put it back into your opponent's hand. 
um, because then they'll just play it next turn and, and still win. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really have any options for landmark removal that actually works in the deck. And um, and then Ravenous Flock can cause tons of issues for this deck um, if played correctly. So aside from the Bandle Tree deck, I think it's a pretty solid option still in the meta. And it's probably being a little underrated and underplayed, which is... Um, kind of why it's been underrated because not enough people are playing it but um but yeah it definitely um is a little slow and the meta is really fast so it shall be interesting if we see a little bit more from this deck moving forward um i still think it's strong but we need we need a little more to know for sure but then we're going to get into nami fizz elusives and this is going to be the other nami deck that's still extremely strong and once again i actually think very similar to shin j4 barriers um is being underplayed um uh, the main reason why I'd say it's being underplayed is because it doesn't give you access to Sparklefly though, so you can't kind of just like Sparklefly your way to prolonging the game until you get like Nami down or anything like that. But I think the fact that it does, it is able to run Bandle gives it plenty of strong options because Bandle City has so many good units and spells. Um, Otterpus is so good in this deck because it does two things. It's uh, one, I think it is so good in the matchup against Nami Zoe because Nami Zoe has to play spells to trigger Nami. Like it runs the same game plan as you. And if you're pranking their spells and they're not pranking yours, that means you're making all their stuff more expensive. And then and then it literally just destroys the Nami Zoe kind of game plan if you can hit the correct spells and at the correct time, um, you can destroy the whole game plan because they need to be able to play cheap spells to be able to boost their units and all that. And the fact that pranks can also even give vulnerable to units, you can give vulnerable to things like Nami, to things like Sparklefly, and just destroy their entire game plan. So I really, really, I think planks are just still in a strong spot in the meta. And after initially getting a lot of flack because of how many people are playing it, I think pranks are kind of underplayed at the moment now. Um, furthermore, I really like Fizz. Um, as a elusive unit kind of just in the same way as zoe like yes zoe does um generate a cheap kind of spell that has tons of value to it but fizz is absurdly hard to remove and if you could get a very huge fizz on the field it's pretty much just game winning because as long as you got spell mana up nothing's removing him and uh, a ton of decks don't run like don't have access to sharp sight so they can't just like block him either so um and once again you got pranks so you can maybe make sharp sight strong like expensive enough to where it's not even playable so i really really like fizz alongside nami as like a big like a potential big elusive unit that your opponent just cannot get rid of um and then the last reason um that i uh, like these two together is because once again the pranks are also so good against non-elusive decks because pretty much the only way a deck without an elusive can interact with an elusive unit is through a spell like sharp sight or through a spell that removes it but if all their spells are more expensive that just slows down any chance that they can remove those uh elusives in a decent enough time frame it doesn't quite have a lot of a ton of cheap like elusive units pretty much fizz and then you're waiting for uh what's his name um, you're pretty much waiting till Zap Sprayfin after Fizz though, which doesn't feel the absolute best in a Nami deck, but still doesn't take the longest. Um, and Zap is just such a strong unit. And then you still got access to Fleet Admiral Shelly, which is one of the best units in the Targon version as well. So I think really strong deck with, uh, um, with, yeah, a ton of strong play patterns and pranks are just really good in the deck and pranks are good overall. So I think uh, definitely an underplayed deck and I'm curious to see if more people turn to it as like a zoe nami stopper because i feel like it should be pretty solid into that deck so that's going to be nami fizz elusives we got um tf swain mid-range this is a deck that may actually be b tier i just need to see a little bit more before i'm ready to classify it as b tier but um yeah tf swain mid-range did not have the best showcase during the world's qualifiers as a decent bit of players brought it and didn't do well with it and uh the reason though i have like some um idea that it should be an okay deck is because of the fact that I just feel like keg control should just have some place in this meta where we have all these decks of elusives and other small units just going really wide and doing their thing. I just feel like there has to be somewhere for keg, keg control to really like disrupt that strategy but there's not a lot that you can kind of tech into this deck it's a very tight list when it comes to what cards you have to run and at the end of the day we've always been kind of low on leviathan most metas like other than like early early on in runeterra leviathan's like slowly became a worse and worse unit like equinox and just so many things for very cheap amount of manas uh amounts of mana kind of stop it from being an impactful unit but it's even worse now because once again uh, those bandle city cards and especially mini morph 
just completely stops Leviathan from having any impact on the game. If you're spending 8 mana on a unit, that's going to feel pretty bad. So, uh, so yeah, for those reasons, it's not the greatest deck, but I feel like it should have a place in the meta. Um, I think TF is still an extremely strong champion in this meta, and if you can get the Nexus attacks off, which shouldn't be the hardest against some of the meta decks, um, Swain should be pretty good too, but not a lot of like strong data to support that there are some people doing good doing pretty well with the list but not a ton so we'll see if this deck actually ends up going down from there we're going to get into poppy demacia rally and the lulu version of this deck is honestly pretty uh, arguably up there with the other s tier decks it is extremely strong poppy is such a strong champion and like aggro focused decks that just want to kind of attack attack and then rally and attack again um she just has one of those few champs that we actually have that makes you feel good about attacking because of how strong her attack effect is uh generally speaking we have champs that want to attack and they just feel so much worse than champs that just sit back and do powerful things without having to interact um but poppy's one of those few ones that attacking feels good with um even without her having quick attack who would you imagine and um and uh lulu makes that even better um providing that awesome boost um to her at times and uh, yeah lulu is just a very strong champion as we see that with the lulu z deck um so uh so yeah these two are really strong together i also think the tristana poppy deck is a solid option as well it goes for more of a little slower more mid-range take on the um on this same style of deck i think it's also still really good and really solid i've been actually playing it myself and it feels really good um so i like both of them as a tier decks i want to see just a little bit more from this deck before i throw it up into s tier um but it's absolutely a really strong new archetype and on the rise um, just rallying with strong champions that benefit from attacking is a is a solid strategy, and that's what you have here uh, with Poppy Demacia Rally, and then you get really strong Bamboo cards as well. So it's just it's good stuff, and um, definitely cool to see um, some of the new champs making their imprint on the meta. From there, we're gonna get into the Viego Thresh Ionia Miss, and this is a deck that we're not seeing a ton of in this current meta. So another one that may be on the uh, that may be trending downward in the current meta, and I'm gonna say that's pretty much mainly because of the fact that uh, it's just a little too slow in the meta. Like uh, actually getting Thresh leveled in a decent enough time frame feels really hard in this current meta. Um, Viego also feels a little slow, especially like trying to get Hydrovine um, alongside Viego feels a decent bit slow. It's just entire game plan seems a little slow for this current fast paced meta. Um, but nevertheless, I feel like it should still have some place in it because you still are running Green Grade Lookout, which is making your expensive, like your Hydrovine cheaper, your Hydrovine cheaper, your Thresh cheaper, or your Viego cheaper, hopefully, um, which should kind of speed up the game plan with those. Um, furthermore, you still do have like good spells like a ton of good spells between shadow isles and ionia to try to kind of last with like vile feasts and other spells like that um syncopation feels a little worse this meta because of the fact that like stress defense and uh mini morph are burst speed spells so you can't really play around those to keep your vehicle alive but you do still have access to miss call it's a hard card to run any more of than just one but you may really want to even consider it just so you can keep that Viego alive um, after your opponent removes it. But overall, the deck seems a little slow, so I'm not entirely sure if it actually belongs in A tier. It's very borderline, but um, I just think if you're also factoring in tournaments, that it has a much better chance of making some noise in tournaments. And we already kind of saw that um, with a, I think, was it a fight night or a tournament? No, in Squeebies tournament. Um, a player brought an Anivia, Lee Sin, and I think Viego Thresh lineup and did pretty well with it. So, um, I yeah, I think Viego Thresh should have a spot in this meta, but the way it has to be played is absolutely different and it's a little slow. So, you really got to be on your toes on how to navigate the deck. But we'll have to see if there's like some nuance or some other way to approach this deck list to make it even better. Um, but tournament's absolutely still a viable option. And then we're going to get into Turbo Thrall. So good old Lissandra Ta Talia um, with those Thrall landmarks. And this is going to be the start of B tier. Um, for me, this deck absolutely moves too slow in this current meta to be anything higher than B tier. Um, and another deck that just runs its list so tight when it comes to the cards it needs. Like it wants Tavern Keeper, but Tavern Keeper doesn't feel great in this meta. Um, there's too many Rally decks to really allow this deck to kind of get stabilized enough. Um, and actually like 
use its spells on its landmark without getting overwhelmed and needing to avalanche and even avalanche doesn't feel as good in this meta as there's just so many different ways to kind of um to just like build a board back up or just uh play around that um so yeah uh terrible thoughts still a strong deck like by all means you can still find success with it but i just feel like you're really running it tight when it comes to winning with this deck you really got to get those like you got to get multiple thralls out of that first landmark that you bust open because if it's just one you're going to lose that's not enough and uh yeah and overall it just it's just quite like we th there hasn't been enough figured out with possibly f messing with the list to make it work in this current meta but it may not be possible considering how much this deck needs to synergize with itself to work the one thing though is that tough nexus is still extremely strong in this meta so if you can get that leveled um lissandra you can still make a lot happen with this deck and then we're going to get Carmel, karma ezreal control and this was once again another deck that was sitting pretty near the top of the meta during last season um where it was just seeing a ton of people piloting it to pretty good success and just absolutely had a place within the meta now however the meta's really sped up ezreal's a, t a lot worse because especially even more so in this list than the ezreal draven list ezreal needs to be able to get some nexus strikes off to be able to like remove units with his spell and like help you like stick around long enough to where karma can get down on the field but that's just not nearly as possible as it was before um and the removal options of these two regions just feel a little bit worse with the inclusion of bantle city um things like aloof traveler make this deck worse because you're you're like losing um you're losing really impactful high mana cards and uh yeah overall just a little slow if you can get an early hexite crystal you can make some happen but otherwise um this deck feels a little little too slow for the current meta and that's why it's struggling but i still think it's a pretty decent option overall especially in the right hands definitely needs to be in the right hands though because this has never been a super simple deck to pilot and once again is a better deck in the tournament scene in a tournament lineup all right we're gonna hit on two staples of rotero and that's gonna actually start with deep so not as malachi deep and this is an another deck been here since just the beginning just hanging in there and um it really uh um it's really just a pretty decent option the each like every meta has a pretty decent option um there isn't really any nuance to the deck this time around we didn't really get any new cards for this uh archetype to really utilize but that doesn't really matter still runs an extremely solid play pattern and especially with a still a decent chunk of mid-range list going wrong can still prey on those mid-range lists by running its own mid-range strategy that's just kind of better at stopping other mid-range strategies and once this deck is deep it's still really hard to deal with that's just the issue though is can it get deep in a good enough time frame especially against those rally decks for it to matter or can it even interact with the elusive units in a deck like Na nami zoe um to to be able to do anything obviously it has bone skewer to maybe go into nami but if that if it was that simple to get rid of a nami then that deck wouldn't be as high as it is so uh yeah a deck that absolutely needs to draw well against the top tier threats in the meta but in the right matchup is still super solid and uh can easily be fit into a tournament lineup from there we're going to get to draven jinx discard and another just notorious deck that's been around for forever um it's definitely on the downturn though and i'm seeing just very little people playing it um in this meta um because i think it's so bad and i i agree to an extent i wouldn't say i fully agree though um people aren't using some of these really good new discard cards that this archetype has to its disposal now um because of the inclusion of all these new discard cards that we got from the uh scion package and uh they work good in this like uh what is it reborn grenadier is a good card and stuff like that that needs to be factored into this deck so i think as players shift back to discard aggro and actually start using the new discard tools they'll see that this deck is a little bit better than they were giving it credit for and i just think we're in a meta where we're kind of incentivized to play aggro and this is still one of the better aggro lists so um I can see this deck definitely turning it around with some better win rates and play rates um, here soon. And uh, yes, one of its best counters in Azir Rally of Blade Dance, which you see directly below it, has really taken a huge hit and really isn't around in the meta as much to make it as good. But it's still a good deck and uh, uh, should should be seen a little bit more. From there, though, we will get into Azir Rally of Blade Dance. And yes, yes, you do see that deck in C tier. Yes, I know that is low. But it shouldn't be that much of a surprise to anyone. Azir Rally of Blade Dance was already a little bit on, like, 
going downward because of the effect of all the previous nerfs it kept getting hit with that were proven to be pretty impactful and then like this pre last season we saw a ton of bilgewater which means a ton of make it rain and make it rain is also not really a card especially alongside a keg that this deck really dealt with that well um so deck was already dealing with a decent bit of obstacles but was still extremely strong but now with the flawless duet nerf i think not only are players incentivized to move away from the list enough to where we shouldn't be seeing it a ton but it also is a huge deal. This deck was running mana very tightly, and Flaws Duet's a huge part of the engine that keeps this kind of deck going. Um, you get the Emperor's Deus down, and then you Blade Dance with uh, Flawless Duet. You get a Aurelia down, and you Blade Dance with Flawless Duet. Like, that's a huge card in the deck, and for it to be one mana more expensive in a deck that was already running super thin on mana, which is why people were even considering using the mana refilling 4-drop. Can't think of its name right now. Um, it's It really has... A lot's changed for the deck, and I also don't think it, I just don't think it also has a good place in the meta, whether it was good or not. So, we're going to see Azir Relia starting off C tier. Here, we're going to finally start getting into these landmark focus decks, and uh, that's not to say that these are terrible options on ladder. You can still find success. C tier means it's still a meta deck, so please keep in mind that C tier does not mean please don't play this. It means it's still a meta deck. It's just that, one, the correct cards that need to be in the list are like those it's very thin on what cards you can really have in the list and then two it means that you cannot really misplay too much those are kind of the big things with c tier decks um or that we're just lacking enough data to know what the true potential is but with this one um i just think the zig talia landmarks are good just not great um having to use unit mana to get your landmarks down and then further using more mana to try to destroy them and possibly not even get the full effect of those landmarks because only so many landmarks actually synergize with destroying them it's just not the great a strategy we didn't see i just personally don't think we got enough support for this kind of strategy um in the beyond the bandwood expansion um and they're just kind of being hard quick carried by the arsenal who who got nerfed to no longer showing you its keywords in hand so um so yeah hard carried by the arsenal in a meta where a ton of games aren't even going till two turn eight um i just don't think it's in the greatest spot and uh one thing that could have really helped was if they just made a landmark spell that summoned a landmark uh a good landmark like a stun landmark or something really solid for uh for like spell mana and for cheap spell mana that would have done a lot for this archetype because always having to use unit mana really messes up so many combos like you want to get your talia down with this but you can't afford both because it's unit mana for the landmark like that's really tough and yeah you just find yourself in those situations so often with Talia, Desert Naturalist, just all these these cards that need a landmark to get their full value. So for that reason, I think uh yeah, Zix Talia and Landmarks pretty much the same way as the Zerith ones are are a little struggling. Then we get to Caitlyn, Timo, Puff Caps, and Traps. Um, this was the worst, probably probably the worst. I don't even think probably. It was the worst new deck of the Beyond the Bandwood expansion at the beginning of the expansion dropping um, because so many people were not only piloting this wrong they built terrible lists that they just assumed would synergize with like bad cards and it took quite a lot of time before we finally started to get some more refined kind of lists that actually had a lot like some actual synergy and really made sense in the meta um as far as like puff caps and traps but we're finally at that point though where people are running like a mid-rangey version with the loof travelers or just an aggro version that's just trying to get as much uh puff caps and traps in that deck as quickly as possible and just kind of aggro out your opponent um so there is kind of a few different ways that people are approaching it soon hopefully we can get the most optimized version though so we can really see what the true potential of this deck is um because i don't feel like that's truly been determined yet but nevertheless the deck is making up some lost ground for its very poor start to the beyond the bandwood expansion and um and yeah i i am curious to see where where this deck goes it uh the, once again it was just like a a marriage that people thought would work so perfectly and it just didn't at first and it's cool that people are figuring out how to actually run caitlin and her support cards now to where we're seeing a little bit more of this and seeing it work decently well so i'm excited to see where the where the deck goes and there we get into our other landmark destruction uh kind of deck and that's going to be zillion zareth landmarks and when it comes to the two like um Zillion Zareth landmarks or the Zix Talia landmarks. 
I really don't know which one's actually that much better, but I would say I probably would lean more to wanting to run the Zillion Zareth one, just because I think uh, Zillion's Time Bombs have a better place in the mana in the meta than um, anything that the Ziggs Talia version does. Uh, just because, once again, with the Bandle Tree decks and stuff like that running around, being able to deal one mana to a large board is actually pretty good right now. Um, and uh, and yeah, if you're if you're using the deck correctly, you can uh, you, with also Zeret's um, kind of control way of like pinging and getting rid of units, you can really wipe a lot of your opponent's board with some very impactful plays. Um, and then this list is it's easier since this list has zillions removal on top of Zeret's removal. It's easier for this list to just throw in as many arsenals as it can. Um, to try to win with that card so it can lean heavier into the arsenal for that reason as well um, which the ziggs to list can't really do so i would say if you're choosing one i would probably lean more towards zareth zillion but overall i don't think either is that great just because once again landmarks with unit mana and running into these situations where you're a little like combos just don't quite work but nevertheless I love Zareth thematically, and I hope he can be a little bit better. I just think the list is a few support cards off of being a true solid meta deck. This is going to be another deck that I feel like a lot of people immediately thought was going to be so strong upon the um, the introduction of the Beyond the Boundwood expansion, where people saw Senna and they were like, oh my god, fast speed Gohard is going to be insane. That's going to change the whole meta. It's going to be terrible. Oh my god, I don't even want to deal with that. Like, I think people were already mentally raging at the thought of a fast speed um, go hard uh, prior to even playing against it. But as we all who've been playing have realized, this deck is not only hard to pilot, it's just the list It has been so hard for people to figure out um, as to how exactly you want to even run this list. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much been the issue for uh, this deck. And then once again, it kind of synergizes well with Ezreal, and Ezreal's not that good of a champion right now. But people are definitely figuring out things a little bit more as far as this deck. I've just run in a ton of removal spells and a very limited amount of uh, units. And overall, the, uh, the, the biggest hurdle that this deck sees, which is pretty consistent with all the decks in C tier, is that the margin of error is just so thin. Like, you make one misplay, and you're pretty much throwing yourself out of the game with a lot of these C tier decks, especially Go Hard. And, uh, and yeah, that makes it worse because the top tier decks are very easy to pilot, and that's just not the case with this. And last but definitely not least to round out the list, this was actually a, a small recent addition we made. This was initially TF Gangplank Noxus, but we changed it to Bandle City because we think there's a lot more potential there with Bandle City than there is with uh, Noxus when it comes to these two. And pretty much what adding Bandle City does is it allows this deck to function a lot more like an aggro deck than a mid-range list. And that's much better for this deck in the current meta than it is... Um, than it would be to function as like a mid-range deck and uh yeah there's just plenty of really good bandle city units for this deck to use as it just continually tries to uh, attack 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 and uh use some really solid um removal spells between bandle city and uh bilgewater to uh just continually just wither down your opponent's board state and then use a little bit of over the top damage you have with things like double up to finish off the game um so yeah we are pretty big fans of this deck and it only recently got popularized by sparkling ice tea and broken ball so it shall be interesting to see if there's a lot more room for this deck to grow um because we could see it happening and uh yeah bandle city is just the ultimate support region right now so it, it should be really interesting and it gives you the keg control with other solid units which is a uh, probably the way that you got to run this keg control so this may be coming for tf swing spot as the actual care control deck that people should be running but that's going to be the tier list but i appreciate you guys' time with me this was really fun to do and i i um yeah i enjoy i enjoy bringing this kind of content for you guys so if you guys enjoy it smash the heck out of that like button make sure you're subscribed out because we got a bunch more content coming and uh and yeah if uh if you if you want to, if you want to talk to me, I would love to hear from you guys as far as what you agree and disagree with as far as how I had everything placed here. Is there a deck I'm missing? Is there a deck that's clearly incorrectly placed? Let me know. We'd love to hear from you guys. This meta has just been all over the place. And uh, yeah, getting this all put together took me forever. So any support would mean a lot. But thank you guys so much. That's going to be it from your boy Optima. I'll see you guys in the next video. For now, peace out. Guys, be safe.